Welcome to Bible study. We're preparing this Bible study for St. Michael's and Faithful Savior Lutheran Churches uh, for January 22nd, 2023. I'm standing today in front of the beautiful Wolfram Cross, which is right here in the St. Michael's Fellowship Hall. Uh, it's a fascinating piece of art uh, prepared by one of the professors at Concordia Seward uh, several years ago. Uh, you may want to spend just a moment uh, this week if you happen to come in and uh, uh, look at the way he plays with uh, the different colors in this thing and the light. Uh, it, might, it might spark a little something with our text today. We are in John chapter 9, and you definitely want to make sure you have a text open so that you can follow along and see some of the things that we're talking about today. Uh, and see is the operative word, because Jesus in chapter Eight changed our metaphor for us and said that he was the light of the world. In this chapter 9 of John's text, John takes that idea and really puts skin on it in a sense. He puts it into, into story, into narrative for us. And he does it in an absolutely fascinating uh, and, and really quite sophisticated way. John's book is sometimes subtly sophisticated. It uses very simple language, but it does use that language in very subtle and complex ways. What we have in front of us today is really conforms to what in the ancient world would have been a play. In the ancient world, plays followed very rigid conventions or rules. If you were going to write a play, it could only do certain things. Uh, one of the things about it is that in each scene, you could only have two or three characters on stage. Most. They never had more than that. Now, one character could be a chorus of individuals. So, if you had a you know, this, this group of people who were standing here, they could speak with one voice. And if you've ever read Greek tragedies, you know, there's this chorus that shows up once in a while, but they really function as a single character. And so they have to leave, and then other characters can come onto the stage. That lets us break this section into some scenes for us. Um, the other piece that John does masterfully in this is uh, he uses, makes use of a, of a form of literature or a device in literature called irony. And here it really boils down to the fact that you know something that the characters on the stage do not. John's use here is really comedic. We don't oftentimes think about the Bible as something you should laugh at. But in fact, John kind of wants you to chuckle. He wants you to see the Jewish leaders of the time being uncomfortable and being made uncomfortable by the wisdom of this poor and simple blind, formerly blind man. That is a comedic irony, that here you have the people who are at the top of the food chain, so to speak, who are being humiliated by a man who is at the bottom. This is compounded by the fact that you, as the reader, know exactly what has happened. And you know that the blind man is right, and that the Jewish leadership are in the dark. And therein is how John is describing this whole piece. We'll want to look at a couple of things as we go through here. And one of them is this man who was born blind. Pay very careful attention to how he refers to Jesus. It changes as this little play progresses. Let's take a look at this. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples, acting like a chorus, asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. Notice the disciples are a little blind right now. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. 
Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And this is the major theme verse of this entire chapter. Jesus is the light of the world. We see and experience and interpret reality, all the things around us, in his light. And when we do that, when we do that, we can walk around the room without barking our shins on the furniture, without falling and hurting ourselves. When he had said this, he spat upon the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes. Now we kind of read this and go, gross. Clearly he is not obeying COVID protocols. But what's really going on here, remember, is that Jesus, or that John's audience in the late first century are having a hard time with the humanity of Jesus. They're quite happy to say that Jesus is an emissary from God, and he may have appeared to be a man, but he wasn't really human, because no truly spiritual being would become truly human. And so John won't let them have that. Jesus spits. He makes mud with the saliva and works it in his hands until it's muddy, and then he smears it on the eyes. It's so physical. John won't let you have a spiritualized Jesus. He's a real guy who's got spit. Jesus says to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then the man went and washed and came back able to see. Now we get the next scene. The neighbors a new chorus, and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some people were saying, were saying it is he. Others were saying, no, it is but someone like him. He, however, kept saying, I am the guy, I'm it. Already we get kind of this comedic idea that these people are all looking at this man and they're saying, who is he? Is he the guy that we used to see here? No, he can't be the guy that he used to be here. And meanwhile, the guys over here are going, guys, it's really me. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus. Notice that. He says, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. All right, so he just kind of clearly tells the little story that has just happened. They said to him, well, where is he? He says, well, I don't know. I was blind last time he was here. I mean, he was, I couldn't see a thing. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been formerly been born blind. Now, it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Have you noticed Jesus always does these miracles on the Sabbath? It's going to be a problem here, too. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Both of these, by the way, are breaking of the Sabbath commandment. Both the making of the mud and putting, you know, the putting it on his eyes, but also him washing it off. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they again said to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. And he said, he's a prophet. Notice earlier when the neighbors had asked him, he had said, he's a man named Jesus. Now, we've won up. He's a prophet. And the Jews did not believe that he had been blind. They thought this is a hoax. And they had received his sight until they called in the parents of the man who had received his sight. And they asked them, is this your son? Why do you say who, whom you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, well, we, we know that this is our son and we know that he was born blind. But we don't know how it is that he sees nor do we know who opened his eyes. 
Ask him. He is of age. He'll speak for himself. You know, parents are flummoxed by it as much as anybody else. Now his parents said this, says John. And now John takes us into the forward, into the late first century. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. That was the reality of the late first century. John's audience would have known that. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time now, they call in the man who had been born blind, and they said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. Well, he answered, I don't know whether he is a sinner. I don't, haven't seen that. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. I can't tell you anything about his moral character, but I am able to see. I can tell you that much. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he answered them, well, I already told you. Do you, want to, do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? I mean, disciples want to hear the stories of their master over and over again. Then they reviled him, saying, you are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. But as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. Well, the man answered, well, this is astonishing. You do not know where he comes from? Can't you read the sign? This is what John, John has been talking about. Can't you see the sign and interpret what it means? Can't you see what it is pointing to? He opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he listens to the one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard of that a man born blind has his eyes opened. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. Notice we've now gone from man to prophet, from God. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, you were born entirely in sins and you were trying to teach us? Well, exactly. That's the irony. He is teaching them because he knows the truth way better than they do. They drove him out. And Jesus heard that they had driven him out. And when he found him, he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, who is he, sir? And this guy's really just telling what he saw. Can you imagine this? He's the first time in his life he has seen anything. And people ask him, what did you see? And he tells them. And nobody believes him. And Jesus said to him, you have seen him. And the one speaking to you is he. And he said, Lord, I believe. Remember, at the beginning of this book, John said, he gives to everyone who believed in him the power to become the children of God. I believe. And he worshipped him. Now notice the transition that this man has made. Starts out calling him a man. Then he's a prophet. Then he's from God. And now he worships him. In the Jewish world, the, the word that's used here for worship is this face on the ground, bowing down. This is something you only do to God. No one else. No one else gets this worship. Jews have been willing to die rather than give this worship to anybody else and to anything else. See how this sight has been clarified, how his eyes have been opened, and how he sees more clearly than anybody else in this story. By the end of the story, the only guy who can really see is the blind man. And all the people who have been born with sight can't see very well. Jesus said, I came into the world for judgment so that those who do not see may see, and that those who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Oh yeah, you're blind. 
Jesus said, if you were blind, you would not, you would not have seen. I wouldn't blame you if you were really blind. But now that you say we see, when clearly you do not, your sin remains. This is a fascinating discussion of faith. And John is asking us to imagine faith as really an enlightenment, as God opening our eyes to see. And really, as this man does, in the face of all this opposition, to trust that Jesus is the one who will continue to help him. We're going to have to talk a little bit more about what exactly do you think this faith is? Is it as our world today says, a weak form of knowledge? You know, I believe something's going to happen, means I'm not really sure. Or is faith something far more significant than that? Is faith the utter trust that every answer to all my problems lies in the hands of God and his son Jesus and nowhere else? Talk about this more. We'll see you soon.